The electrosurgical generator, or diathermy unit, has been described as the most hazardous device used on a daily basis in the operating theatre. With this in mind, we will take a few minutes to tell you about the hazards involved in using electrosurgical equipment, give you an insight into how it works, and give you some basic knowledge to encourage safe practice in the theatre. So, how does it work? How can we pass high voltage at a relatively high current through a patient without killing them? The key factor that allows the use of electrosurgery is that the current from the generator is high frequency alternating current. Low frequency current such as the mains which alternates 50 times per second or at 50 Hz leads to neuromuscular stimulation and potential cardiac arrest. Electrosurgical generators deliver a much higher frequency, around 400 to 500 kilohertz, and it is this that prevents neuromuscular stimulation and allows the current to pass safely through the body. There are two methods of applying electrosurgery, monopolar and bipolar. We will deal firstly with monopolar electrosurgery. Having established that the high frequency AC prevents neuromuscular stimulation, why is the clinical effect achieved at the tip of the instrument and not at the patient return electrode? This comes down to a simple matter of surface area and current concentration. The power is concentrated over a tiny surface area at the tip of the electrosurgical instrument yet dissipated over an area many thousand times greater at the patient return electrode, thus causing a negligible heating effect. It is important to appreciate that, despite what many think, the pad or patient return electrode does not earth the patient. The pad merely completes the circuit back to the electrosurgical generator. It is not an earthing device. Most electrosurgical generators in the UK are what is termed isolated. However, if the system you are using is not an isolated one, you must take special care to ensure the patient return electrode is properly applied and checked throughout the operation. The major potential hazard with the older style of grounded generators is that the current flowing through the patient will not preferentially look for the patient return electrode to complete the circuit. It is equally happy to flow back to earth. Therefore, should the patient return electrode become detached from the skin, the current may leave the body by any number of routes, for example the operating table or ECG electrodes causing burns at these points due to current concentration. Remember that although you, as the surgeon, may not apply the patient return electrode, it is your responsibility to ensure that it is properly applied. So, you should be aware of some basic principles relating to the pad. You should ensure that a well-vascularized muscle mass is chosen and that you avoid areas of vascular insufficiency, irregular body contours and bony prominences and also consider the incision site and prep area, the patient position, and other equipment on the patient. You will find that many patient return electrodes nowadays are of the split plate variety. This is another safety feature, whereby the electrosurgical generator constantly checks how well the patient return electrode is applied by measuring impedance across the pad. Should the pad begin to peel off the skin, the impedance rises and the output from the generator shuts down until the patient return electrode is properly reapplied. What modes of electrosurgery are you aware of? Let's look at the two common modes, cut and coagulation. There are two important differences between these the time the current is actually supplied by the generator and the voltage. To achieve the precise,
clean cut one gets in the pure cutting mode, the power is on 100% of the time, leading to rapid and extreme heating of the tissues, which vaporises cells. Pure cutting current is used, for example, to open the skin. The voltage used in cut is substantially lower than in coagulation mode, with peak voltages ranging from approximately 1,300 to 2,300 volts. To give the hemostasis associated with coagulation, the power is delivered in pulses and is actually on for only about 6% of the time. This results in much less heat generation, so instead of being vaporised, the tissue is heated more slowly and chars. Coagulation is useful where tissue is oozing and may be used to desiccate tissue where the instrument is used in direct contact with the tissue or fulgurate where the voltage is increased, the instrument held slightly above the tissues and the sparks allowed to jump across the gap. Another important fact to be aware of is that coagulative currents can be associated with peak voltages from around 3,500 to as high as 9,000 volts. Blend sits somewhere between these two modalities, where the peak voltage is higher than cut at over 3,000 volts, but lower than coagulation, and the power on and off for equal amounts of time. Blend provides cutting with hemostasis. Here we have summarised the properties of cut and coagulation. Note the differences between the duty cycle, the peak voltages and the effects that each of these modalities achieve. You should be aware that due to the high power flow through cables supplying electrosurgical instruments, the phenomenon of current leakage occurs. Here, you can see this leakage current is high enough to light an unconnected fluorescent tube. More worryingly, if electrosurgical cables are wrapped around metal instruments, current leakage will energise the instrument, which, if in contact with the patient's skin, has the potential to cause a burn. A practical example might be the tip of a clip used to secure drapes having cables wrapped around it and then coming into contact with the patient's skin. We demonstrate this here using a pair of forceps and the stake to represent the patient's abdomen. Finally, remember not to use any alcohol-based solutions when utilising electrosurgery. The electrosurgical current has the ability to set such solutions alight, and cases of full thickness burns to patients' buttocks and perineal areas have been documented as a result. This demonstration shows how the flame of burning alcohol would not even be seen under bright theatre lighting. Electrosurgical current can create voltages in the pacemaker lead, which can cause a heating effect at the point of contact with the endocardium, leading to failure of the pacemaker. If the patient has a pacemaker, it's wise to use bipolar electrosurgery. If this is not practical, the patient return electrode should be sighted so that the current does not pass through the heart or the pacemaker lead, and power settings should be kept low. Bipolar electrosurgery is when the active output and patient return functions are both accomplished at the site of surgery and the current path is confined to the tissue grasped between the forceps tips. As demonstrated here, where we see a bipolar device being applied to egg white, bipolar is useful as it provides precise controlled desiccation, causes a limited amount of tissue to be impacted by the current, and works well in irrigated environments. Bipolar also uses some of the lowest voltages in electrosurgery, with peaks of up to around 750 volts. 
To sum up, some of the key facts. Electrosurgery can be used without electrocuting the patient because it is high frequency, between 4 and 500 kilohertz. Cutting current flows 100% of the time, has a lower voltage than coagulating current and produces intense heat which vaporises cells. Coagulating current flows as little as 6% of the duty cycle, has a higher voltage than cutting and provides effective tissue hemostasis. The pad or patient return electrode does not earth the patient. It completes the circuit back to the electrosurgical generator and is not an earthing device. Monopolar electrosurgery requires a patient return electrode and uses the patient as part of the circuit. Bipolar electrosurgery does not require a patient return electrode and restricts the flow of current to between the tips of the bipolar forceps or similar instrument. And finally, don't forget that the electrosurgical generator has been described as the most hazardous device used in the operating theatre on a daily basis.